Welcome back to Cox Connections, a program that provides up-to-date information on events that affect you, our customers. The third annual 1619 The Making of America Conference took place this September at Norfolk State University. Scholars and community leaders are bringing awareness of issues to culture, race, gender, and law that have derived from the African culture being brought to America. Here to talk with us today about the conference is committee chair, Dr. Cassandra L. Newby Alexander, professor of history at Norfolk State University. Thanks for being here today with us. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about the conference and what it's about. Well, you know, this is an opportunity that we took starting in 2012 to bring scholars, community people, uh, and those just interested in history and culture uh, to come to the table and talk about this important moment in American history. In fact, the reason we named the conference 1619 The Making of America is we're saying that so much of African cultures, and it's many cultures, not just one, because we're talking about the west coast of Africa, and even some Africans who are coming from the east coast, especially Madagascar, which is an island off of the coast of the, the southeast coast of, of the continent, that all these different cultures that came together at that time began what we know today as America. You think about the foodways and customs, the religious practices, the way in which we express ourselves, the way that we speak, the way that, that we, the words that we use, all of that is an expression of our culture. And it's at that point in 1619 that we begin to see the building of an American culture. Prior to that, you had, of course, native peoples here, and you had some white men, especially from, from Western Europe, England, uh, but you also had some Spanish, some Dutch, and others here in what would become the United States of America. And those individuals um, were not, they didn't have a, a lot of women with them. And, and even at that time, women were the purveyors of culture often. They were the ones who maintained a lot of the traditions through the way that they prepared the foods, the way that they set up the household, the way that they educated the children. And so it's in 1619 that we would see all these things coming together. So this is the third annual conference. Yes. Tell me why you started it. I was on the um, committee um, to do programming f when the, there was the 400th anniversary of America's founding in 2007. And there was a, a man there named Calvin Pearson who would hold up sometimes a placard at every meeting. And he would say, 2019, 2019. And people kept asking him, which is what he wanted them to do, what is it about uh, 2019 that you want us to remember and he said well this is the first time that Africans were brought to the American colonies or at that time it was really just the Jamestown colony and this was the start of Afri of Africans in America because even though you had those in fact Skip Gates is uh, many rivers to cross he s decided to focus instead on Florida and the Africans who were brought in by the Spanish there, and then we know there were Africans who were brought in by the Dutch in New Amsterdam, which is now New, New York and New Jersey. But that's not actually the core of American society and culture. The core began right here. And so we want to educate people because the, the history of our nation is filled with a lot of myths the way in which it's taught, the way it's communicated, because starting in the 1830s, they wanted to find a way to build uh, a, an American mindset, an American culture, and so they created a lot of mythology, uh, focusing instead of Jamestown, which was started by a corporation for the purpose of making money, instead of focusing on that, they focused on Plymouth and how, oh, these people came over and they dedicated the land to God. Well, these people also took land from the people who were there, murdered them uh, as, as they were pushing inward. Um, and so we want to refocus attention on what really happened, the good, the bad, and the ugly, um, and, and have a dialogue that doesn't involve um, 
taking an ethical or moral stance on any issue, but simply saying these are the things that, that happen in American society. And let's remember those things, and let's see what continues to exist. What was the culture, what was the history that really made us who we are today? Wow, that's amazing. Can you tell me a little of the highlights of the conference? I'd be delighted. Uh, one of the, the um, advantages that we have had is that we had funding from the National Endowment for the Humanities. We also have funding from the Dr. Martin Luther King Commission, Memorial Commission. Uh, we've had funding, uh, support funding from the National Park Service through Fort Monroe. And we've had the support of local universities, of course, uh, Norfolk State University is the spearhead behind this, but we also have um, Hampton University, who uh, was one of our uh, partners, uh, very close partners. They co-hosted the conference this year. And we also have Old Dominion University and Virginia Wesleyan College and the College of William and Mary. And we've had then this wealth of scholars who've been who we've been utilizing their connections to bring important scholars to the table. So um, this year we had people like Benjamin Bowser, who's written this incredible work on the cost of gangster rap. Because most people don't know that the history of rap music and rapping has African origins and is part of the, um, the spoken word. Um, and to that end, the Park Service, is, they sponsored a group of young people from the New Bedford Whaling Ambassadors Youth Group to come and talk about the spoken word and to show how they can use spoken word, music, and dance to teach other young people about the history of our national parks. Um, we had Lisa Brooks, who is a specialist on Native American literature, who is pioneering how how scholars are reintegrating our understanding of native literature into the body of literature because for so long the focus was only on uh, written literature and it was as if oral literature was dismissed and so it's bringing that reintegrating that back michael gomez who has pioneered the african diaspora studies throughout the country actually worldwide uh, he was there talking about how do we write about the continent of Africa? How do we write about this history? And why are we still including in most of our textbooks all of this mythology about Africa? Wow. That is very, very intriguing. I would love to know more. I'm sure that our viewers would love to know more. Is there a website that uh, you can direct them yes. to, to be able to learn more about this? Yes, and, and actually for those who missed our conferences, um, because of the funding that we've received, we have uh, the opportunity to post all of our sessions online. And so they can go to www.1619makingofamerica.com, all one word. Um, and if they're not sure, then all they have to do is type in 1619 conference. They can find it on YouTube and hopefully they can tweet us to let us know what they thought about the activities. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming, sharing the information with us and for joining us on our show. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Cox Connections. I want to personally thank you for choosing Cox Communications for your entertainment, information and communication needs. We know you could have chosen another provider, but because you chose us, we pledge to be a friend you can trust. We promise to provide you with innovative products backed up by a talented local team of professionals that will help you stretch your dollar. And we promise to continue to make a difference in Hampton Roads community. From all your friends and neighbors here at Cox, we thank you again for joining us on this edition of Cox Connections.